What's your advice on magnetometer positioning? Thank you for ten dollars from uh, from Cowzilla ninety four. Uh, I have one on a four inch long range quad, and it is initially accurate, but drifts within a minute of taking off. Yeah, so the issue there is probably that the electromagnetic interference from the motors is throwing the compass off. Uh, if you were running ArduPilot. ArduPilot has a calibration that it does where you hold the drone down on the ground. I put some cinder blocks on top of my drone's legs and you spin the motors up and down and it measures the electromagnetic interference from the motors as you spin them up and down and calibrates that out. Betaflight doesn't have that. INEV doesn't have that. Uh, so the best thing to do is to get the magnetometer as far as you can get it away from the body of the drone. The other thing that is helpful is to wrap the wires in uh, foil tape, copper tape, something like that. If you do that, make sure you also coat it with fabric or heat shrink so it doesn't the, the copper tape doesn't short circuit something. But that limits some of the interference that you get from the motors. Having the, the two places that are most common to put the magnetometer is out the back of the drone and ideally, you want it a little bit far out the back to get it away from the VTX antennas, which are usually also out the back. Or on the front, like above the top plate, you know, on the sort of forehead of the drone is another place to put it. You should be able to get usable results, certainly on a 7-inch or bigger. If you're on a 5-inch or smaller, it can be, it can be in some cases impossible to get a clean compass reading. At which point you want to just turn the compass off. Betaflight and INAV will do good return to home and okay position hold for about five to seven minutes before you start to get drift with no compass whatsoever. If you need to position hold for more than about five minutes, you got to have a compass. Okay, that your mileage may vary. For some people it may be 10 minutes, but the quad will eventually begin to toilet bowl if you don't have a compass. Um, but, uh, you can do return to home and waypoint navigation, no problem without a compass. What about moving the magnetometer out of the plane of the motors? I don't know about that. It's not the motors that are generating the, uh, electromagnetic interference. Anyway, it's the wires. The wires radio radiate electromagnetic interference as current flows through them, but they radiate it out in you know, in all directions. So like the, moving it out of the plane of the motors, uh, it's distance that matters, not so much location, I don't think. If location did matter, then where you would want it, if you think about it, the wire, uh, like imagine that this pen is the wire, okay? The motor is out here, the ESC is over here. This, this mo wire is going to radiate like this, right? It's going to radiate out this direction. It is going to have the least amount of radiation here and here. So in theory, if position mattered, you would want the GPS to be directly off the end of the motor, which of course isn't going to happen. And if you put the GPS directly off the end of one motor, it would be perpendicular to the other, so it would still get... Interference. You, you want distance. You want to have the compass and G, I say GPS because the compass is usually integrated in the GPS. If you want, uh, you want, you want it as far away from the motor wires as possible. And there is a big difference. Even two or three centimeters helps. What you will sometimes find is at six centimeters distance, everything is fine. At four and a half centimeters, everything is effed. It's a it's a it's a it's a logarithmic. It's an exponential drop off. So even if you can just get an extra couple centimeters of distance, it can make the difference. <laughs>